All right, here we go. First time moving our portable milking stand slash shelter. See if we can do it with the mule. Hopefully it's light enough so we can move it with the mule, but we're gonna find out. Let me change my hitch. I think we need to figure out something better so we don't have to have a heavy chain all the time. Like it's fine, but something more convenient would be nice. What are you thinking? I don't know yet. I tend to overbuild things, so I'm curious to see how heavy this is. It will get lighter once all this pressure treated dries out because pressure treated when you get it is always soaking wet. So. Yeah, we'll see. All right, four wheel drive and we'll go in low. Oh, not a problem. Easy peasy. That pulled so easy, I didn't even know it was behind there. Yeah, that'll be good. I just can't get over how easy that pulled. You couldn't feel it behind the mule. I had it in four wheel drive low and it just putted right along. So that's good to know. And then once all these four by sixes dry out, the pressure treated stuff, it'll really be light. So I'm happy. So now we want to put up some fencing. We want to get the cows out on some fresh grass here for the first time. We're going to use some Premier One netting fence for now if little cookie was bigger we would just do one strand of poly wire but where he is small i don't want to have to worry about him escaping especially being new here so we're going to use our netting this is good for sheep goat poultry and cows well, so we're going to run it this way over and i'll figure out how far over then we want to go back up we just want to give them enough for like one, maybe two days, and this grass is short, so we'll probably, I'm thinking we're gonna go about two rolls of fencing. They are getting excited. I think they know we're gonna be putting them out on pasture. She's licking her chops. Right, and so is Cookie. Mini chip. Mini chip. All right, so we gotta figure out, remember how to do all this fun stuff again. Cool. All right, we're going to turn on our energizer and go see how hard that netting is hitting and then we can let them out. There, that works. All right, let's see how this fence is hitting. Ground it out and then put it on the fence. 7.6, 6.4, 5.9. It's a little all over the place, but it's hitting good enough and they can hear it. Look at them at the gate. They know what's going on. Are you guys ready? Yeah. Yep. We've never even let you out before. And the cool part about doing it right here is they can come over here and visit with the girls that are hiding in the barn and kind of get to know each other a little bit better. Are you ready for some fresh grass? Cookie says, yep. All right, kiddos. The plan is just to be able to leave the gate open. I hope that works. It's open. Come on. Come on, Azalea. Oh, hello. Hi. Here she comes.
Cookie's going to touch it. Oh, yummy, she says. He's got to check out the perimeter. Yeah. All right, that should keep them in. Azalea seems happy with all the grass. It's not as tall as I'd want it to be right now, but she is loving it. And this way in the morning, we can come out here, feed her inside the stanchion, and we can get her all brushed down, see how it goes. Yeah, we want to try getting her used to the stanchion, so we'll give her some treats, get her in there, brush her, let her know that's a fun spot to be, so that way we can get to milking soon, hopefully, because, well, that's why we got her for that. But this is so much fun. I love watching them eat and do all the things. And we got some manure for compost and fertilizer. And we have a lawnmower. He's already fertilizing it out here. Yep. Which is good to see, because that's going to help all this grow. And then the chickens are going to come over here, scratch up the manure, spread it, get all the bugs and all the lava out of it. Yep. And that'll give them more feed and give them more delicious eggs. And little Cookie's loving it. Gives us some entertainment as well. All right, we gotta lay the feeder over and put some longer feet on it because they had come and off, came off on the last move. That'll do. All right, we'll get this lowered over, flipped over, and then we'll bring it into the goat's pen. You gonna go try it out or what? What do you think, Daisy?
Good morning. It is our second day of having azalea and cookie on the farm. This morning we're going to get a lead on azalea and a rope halter on little cookie. And we're going to feed her in the stanchion and get her used to putting her head in and see how that goes because we want to start milking her soon but we want to ease into it and get her used to everything. So right now she's scratching her head on cookie. That's kind of funny. Last night he was scratching on her and she's scratching on him this morning. You hear that, don't you? You know what we got? Let's go out through here and we're gonna get some fresh grass, get brushed. Oh yeah, let me open that. We got some grain. We got her in. It took both of us, but we got it. She was easy. It just took two hands and not a camera. Yeah, and we don't want to like make it a bad experience either. We're gonna get a dish so she can get that easier. Um. All right, now we got him on his rope halter and gotta get him trained to that. Maybe and us Azalea's trained. in her stanchion. Come. Saying, what is going on this morning? Hi, huh, Azalea. Want some treat? Look. There's your baby. So the front, he must drink out of it because there's nothing there. And then oh, yeah. the back. That was pretty cool. She actually moved her feet so I could get to her udder. Good girl. Good girl, Azalea. She's hungry. So the headlock is working perfectly. I went seven and a half inches. That was what Ben from Holler Homestead said he did for his Jersey cow and it worked perfect. And I can attest to that, that seven and a half is perfect. It's not too tight and it's not too loose. So she can get in and out. We have the locks up high. We just flip those over and she is locked in there. We're just trying to get her used to that and eating and just staying calm. I milked her out a little bit more. She doesn't have a ton on her because Cookie's been drinking it. So that is good. We're just gonna brush them down and just keep getting them used to us and everything new that is here. He seems more mellow over there. Yep. He likes the scratches. He likes it now. There's your baby. All right, ready? the grain bucket. I'll take the grain bucket. So you gotta loosen it up down here. And then you pull it off like that. There we go. Is that better? It says yes, yes it is. Now that we open the headlock, she's just content as can be and don't even want to leave. I say that is a win. She is content still in there eating grass, so she doesn't mind it at all, which is a good thing. So we spent about, I don't know, half hour or so with them this morning, brushing them and milking them a little bit. So we'll do that probably one more time before we stop milking her. All right, you guys ready to move forward some more?
All right, now we just gotta go feed the piglet. We'll get some food scraps for him. Pretty soon we'll be having some whole milk for him. Look at them flocks. Got some treats for you. I got a good treat for you this morning. Are they excited or nervous? Eh, a little bit of both. Just try to put it in this bucket because it's got some liquids in it and you guys can drink it and eat it and all this stuff. Ready? They want their eggs. They like their eggs. I guess I can't blame them. Who doesn't like their bacon and eggs? We got some dirty eggs we'll give them. Oh. They know that sound. Babe, take one and put one in your mouth and eat it like that. No, 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 no. You wouldn't want to kiss me after. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> They'd love them. I'm going to have to fill that up soon. It's getting what are you nice girls out doing? Now. You love your new hay feeder? <sighs> All right, that'll take a little while, but we'll get that filled up and we can water the pigs and make sure they don't run out of water. We're gonna be using that pretty soon for a lot of the animals. When we stop moving the cows around, we're probably gonna need that. And when we get the meat birds out on pasture, we're gonna need that. So it'll be getting its use this year. It looks like we got just over 175 gallons of water. The pig's water is only gonna take probably 30 gallons. So we're gonna shut this off for now. I gotta get my cover on that IBC tote to keep the sun out of it. We have a UV coated tarp. So that way we don't have to worry about the water growing any allergy. And then we'll leave it sitting in there and we'll... I'll need to grab my air compressor. That tire is pretty low. That one's a little soft. That don't look bad. We'll check all the tires. And we have our little filler out here. That one's soft too. But first, I need to chalk the tires and fix this. That is bent. I don't like that. All right, let's see what we can do here. All right, so this is bent. I've tried fixing it before without heat and it doesn't work. So I brought my little map gas torch down. I'm gonna try to heat this up and bend it over. Let's go give the pig some water. I 
I wasn't recording, but I heard a loud pop. The only thing I can think of is we blew a tire. The pigs, they came out running. Azalea, it popped her head up. So I'm not too sure. It was like right over here when it happened. Let's see. Ah, uh, yep. This back one right here popped. Wow. All right. So I'm gonna have to get a new tire for that. I was thinking it was gonna be that front one because that was the lowest earlier. But nope, it was that one. Okie dokie. Not sure what caused that, if it's all the weight, if it was just because those tires are old. We've had these trills around for a while. They have tubes in them. Maybe I had pinched something, dry rotted, ran over something. I don't know, but it was like a gunshot going off. But at least we got it filled up. We got it over here and we can water the pigs with it. We just got to make sure we get something so we can get this fixed. So we can get our water out and around to water everything else. Did that scare you guys? It was pretty loud, wasn't it? I'm going to call that a three quarter inch auber or axle. And then the tire is 16 by six and a half by eight. We'll see what we can find. I'm probably going to check Harbor Freight first and see what they have. They might have some hard plastic ones, and that would be even better. We wouldn't have to worry about that again. I went and checked on our spring. I wanted to make sure that was still flowing good up for our water source, and it is. And I came back, and this water is already overflowing. Your piggies want some water? No? All right. All right, I don't know if it's for you guys or not, but it is finally our planting season. I am assuming a lot of you have already been able to start your major pot of your vegetable gardens outside. This today is our first day where we can start planting the stuff that isn't frost hardy. So we're gonna start prepping our beds here and more over that way. One of our kind of a dilemma is we know this isn't gonna be our final resting place for all of the gardens. We're going to be going up to Gina's Secret Garden, but we can't do that this growing season, or at least not this early. So we need to make this area all prepped and over here so we can grow food for us so we can eat it this fall. Because if we don't do it now, we won't be eating it and then enjoying it. No, and my seedlings are doing great, but they need to get outside. I started some seeds inside. They are ready to come out so that they can get some nice nutrients from the outside soil. So it'll be nice just to have everything all in one area and just start seeing stuff happen. I'm just trying to put some compost around it to get new new nutrients in there. What do you think you're doing? You approve? Well, we got all the beds ready. We're gonna move on to a different project and probably plant in a little bit, but we yep. have to get some minerals down to Azalea, get some stuff like that done that we wanna get done, and then we will take care of some plants in some garden. Right. 
and that way it'll give it a little bit of time for the soil to warm up some more too. Going to start out with a few minerals, figure out what works best. She is definitely using this run. It's really cute. She'll come in, I think, get out of the sun, lay in here. Little cookie goes inside there once in a while, plays like a little playhouse for him. So. So they just woke up from their midday nap yep. and came out. So perfect time in our, our end. Right. Or she saw us and said, let me get away from them people. <laughs> Azalea's already checking out your new loose minerals. She's in there giving them a taste test. And I'll have to fill it back up. They don't know what she needs, what she wants. Right. I'm supposed to have a basket for that. <laughs> it's supposed to be a lot of things. They're nice and clean now, aren't they? They sure are. Well, now if I can just get them safely to the house. Right. All right, we're giving Azalea a new area. I don't know if you can tell, but you can see the line that she already ate down from that area. So we left that area set up so she can have access to her water and we extended it all the way over here and then back to that fence. So we're thinking this should probably last her two days, hopefully. And then we'll probably leave this fence set up. This is for poultry netting also. And we'll bring the meat birds over here and chicken tractors, but we'll leave the perimeter set up for um, predators. So that way we don't have to worry about coyotes coming in at night. And then we'll get the meat birds over behind her fertilizing this. So then when this grass is all grown up, ready to go, it'll have been fertilized from her and by the meat birds. So it should really start growing up good for her. And then she'll probably be back here probably like a month. We want to let it rest for about 30 days. So... We're hoping that'll work out and then we won't have to set the fence up again. How's that fresh grass there, Azalea? You enjoying it? It is the next morning and it's looking like she ate mostly baking soda and kelp for the minerals that we put out. Quite a bit of the kelp, or that put it in with the salt. Yeah, not really. Eat a lot of that kelp. He is also putting in some string bean seed so that way we can kind of have them in succession we got the plants that are already started and then we'll get the new ones starting from seed we're gonna do the same thing with zucchini summer squash we're not because we have five plants of summer squash and that'll be more than enough winter squash we'll keep an eye on it if we have any of them that die from being transplanted we'll replace them with seeds but other than that i think those will be fine because that's just like a one harvest and you're done and that's at the later end of the season but like zucchini you get a ton of it until I would say like, usually it seems like July, August for us. And then it stops and you want more because you're like, hey, I really like it. So we're gonna do kind of like a week or two after that, we'll replant some more. I'll have to do an update on the game cameras because we've been getting a lot of text messages from our game cameras because the things that have been coming in has been quite a bit and I've been surprised. So. I'll have to do an update on that soon, just not in this video.
All right, we used up all the straw we had up here for mulch. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get some more. The mulch helps protect it from the wind right now, which is really good for our starts that are already started. And then it also helps hold the moisture in. So we have to water less and I'll suppress the weeds because mother nature does not like to be left bare. So it's gonna save us a lot of work. That breeze feels good. Are we gonna do any more? Are we doing anywhere it's not planted? No, we'll leave that space and that way we remember to plant some more right. zucchini. And then I have that one bed I can put some herbs and stuff in. So these guys are blowing over hard with the breeze. And then these ones are protected with the mulch. So it's gonna help a lot with that too. wetting it back down so that way it'll help keep the straw from blowing around. It's kind of amazing if you didn't water in the mulch afterwards the wind would blow it everywhere. You water it in and it'll stay. It's just, I don't know, it just boggles my mind. You just put a little bit of water on it and it must like lock it together and it won't blow around so it's worth the extra effort. It looks good. I'm excited. Are you excited? I am. Yesterday when we were out here, we had just a few potatoes popping up. And just with the heat that we've been getting yesterday and now today, these potatoes have gone crazy. Let me show you. Gina covered them back up, but you can see them starting to poke through here, here. These two center rows were poking through and you can see where Gina put the hay, all the straw back over it. So these are gonna be doing really good. Onions are looking good. Those onions are looking better. And then everything else in here is starting to pop up. So another couple of days, those will look huge. These onions are doing so good. Yeah. The carrots are doing good. I mean, I have a hard time with carrots and with these raised beds, I've had it. I mean, hopefully they do good this year, but last year they did so good. Yep. And then the spinach grew like twice as big since yesterday. It's crazy. 